Hello, I'm Dave. I'm Carrie, and we are One Adventure at a Time. And if you've been following us, you know we just spent three months in Newfoundland. It was the best three months ever. It was amazing. <laughs> Today's video is just going to be about how to get to the island. But before we get into that, I want to point out these little lanterns behind us. Every time people see them, they want to know where we got them. We got these off Amazon, and I will leave a link pinned in the comment below. These are my favorite accessories ever. Yeah, I love we've them. We've been using them for two or three years straight, yeah. and they're still going strong. Let's get right into it. Yep. Make sure you arrive at least two hours before departure. It takes them about an hour and a half to load the ferry, and this will save your spot on the ferry. One of the tips about getting on the ferry is have everything ready and at your fingertips, not in the back of the van, because once you get on the ferry, they pack you in so tight, you're not gonna be able to get anything out of the back doors. So I have mom and dad snacks, I have Rudel snacks, I have whatever we're gonna bring on, a blanket, a sweater, my hat, and then because we're traveling with a dog, I have a cleanup bag with paper towels and disinfectant, dog bags and things like that. Because if he does relieve himself, it's my responsibility to clean it up. And I don't wanna to have to be running around to find things to clean it up. So we are all set. We're gonna start with the shortest ferry and the least expensive ferry, kinda. So we're talking about, we're gonna talk about three different ferry trips and how to get to the island. And mm -hmm. we're gonna start off with the shortest one. Yes. All right. And that is from Blanc to Blanc, Quebec into St. Barb, Newfoundland, but there's a catch. You have to drive a thousand, over a thousand miles through Labrador and Quebec to get there. Yeah, so we started in Bay Como and from Bay Como to Blanc -sur Blanc, so that's all the way through Labrador, um, 1,060 miles. And I think that cost us about 600 American dollars in gas. Yeah, so that's a pretty expensive bill to get to the ferry. We also did this journey in April, and when we got to the ferry, there was so much ice that we couldn't even cross. Yeah, so if you go the wrong time of year, you want to be able to cross this ferry for a certain amount of time before they can get the icebreaker out and break a path for it. This feels yeah. like we're traveling the Northwest Passage, something that I always wanted to do. <laughs> The wind is blowing almost 30 knots right now, and we're following the Coast Guard cutter. But I can tell that the ferry's having trouble staying right behind it. The wind's blowing us a little bit off to the side. Um, that was really exciting to us, and we didn't have to wait too long. But sometimes you have to wait three days to even a week to get across. Yep. Um, but it was exciting for us. <laughs> it was exciting. I loved it. <laughs> We're going to talk about the next ferry, which is probably the most popular ferry. There's a lot of information, so I'll try to make this as uncomplicated as I can, if that's possible. I have a cheat sheet here. So this is from North Sydney, Nova Scotia to Porta Basque, Newfoundland. This ferry is six hours. It runs every day. There are two crossings every day. Now, to get on the ferry, you have to pay for your vehicle. That's done by size. And you have to pay for your person. A 20 foot vehicle was $114. That's just for the vehicle. And for our persons, it would have been $43 each. And then if you have children, it's a little less ex expensive, but you have to pay for each child. And if you're a senior, you get a little bit of a discount on top of that. Now that's just to get you on the ferry. That means you'll, your vehicle will be on the ferry and you will be sitting in a seat somewhere on the ferry. But there are lots of other options that you can choose from. So on the Port Abasque Ferry, or the, um, there's a two bed cabin, a four bed cabin, a pet friendly cabin, a deluxe cabin, and reserved seating. Now let's talk about probably the most important thing that I want to touch on if you're going to Newfoundland with a pet. So here are your options with your pets. You can either leave them in your car for six hours and you cannot go back to your vehicle and check on them or walk them. They will be there by themselves for the duration of the trip. You have to bring your own kennel, but you're going to pay a fee for the kenneling location on the ship, which is $16.75 each way. 
So they will be in a kennel that you provide for the six hours. You can take them out, walk them on the pet area, and there's a very small bathroom area that's pretty much like kitty litter. Rudel wanted nothing to do with it at all. <laughs> <laughs> or you can purchase a pet friendly cabin. If you're going to get a cabin, I suggest that you purchase it as far in advance as you can. They don't have very many cabins and they sell out six months ahead of time. Yes, very quickly. Okay, so to give you an idea, for our friends, Ed and Maria, who were with us with the Jeep, so they, per they paid for the Jeep, they paid for themselves, and they purchased a pet-friendly cabin. That was $286 one way for them. Now that gets you onto the island and then you got to choose which direction you go, which might change which ferry you take. It could, but this is still the cheapest route, I think. <laughs> okay, so let's go into ferry number three, which is the ferry that we took. This is from North Sydney to Argentia or vice versa. Welcome, come on in. This is our pet friendly cabin. It comes with four bunks. When you don't need them, we fold them up. And it's really large actually. They have closets, they have a bathroom, a sink, a toilet, and a shower. I'm pretty happy with it. The I am too. It's larger than our van. Yes. The best part is dogs can come. So there's one of eight pet friendly cabins on this cruise ship. And that's eight out of 150 cabins. So if you're going to be boarding the ship with a pet, we booked this room in January for July. It fills up fast. In fact, there are 150 cabins on this ferry and they are all booked for the summer. So yeah. book ahead. Uh, this ferry um, doesn't start running until mid-June to mid-September. So this is a time-limited ferry. It's 17 hours long. It only runs three times a week and it only runs uh, throughout the night. So you're gonna need to think about if you, same thing with the port of Basque Ferry, you have to pay for your vehicle and you have to pay for your person. That gets you on the ferry. This ferry um, also has accommodations other than just getting your vehicle and yourself on board. There's two bed cabins, four bed cabins, a deluxe cabin, and the pet friendly cabin. You can just sit in a seat somewhere and sleep in the seat for 17 hours, which a lot of people did. And the Port of Basque Ferry, you can purchase um, reserved seating which would get you a nice reserved seat in a quiet area. On the Argentia Ferry, uh, there was no reserved seating, but there were still seats available. Yeah. Now, there is no Wi-Fi on this ferry for 17 hours. There are no TVs in the rooms for 17 hours. And the same thing with the pets as the previous ferry. You can leave them in your car, but there's no way we were going to leave Rudel in yeah, the car for too long. 17 hours. You have to bring your own kennel, but you're going to pay a fee for the kenneling location on the ship, which is $16.75 each way. So they will be in a kennel that you provide. You can take them out and walk them on the pet area. And there's a very small bathroom area that's pretty much like kitty litter. What we did was we purchased a pet friendly cabin. We purchased this ferry in January and June was already full. Yeah, it's sold out. There's only six cabins, I believe. I think six or eight pet friendly cabins. Yeah. And we purchased our trip July 15th. So that gives you an idea of how full it was. Now, the reason why we're not going to suggest this ferry, the number one reason if you have a pet, I think it's for me, I would not do it again with Rudel. Yeah because it was too hard on him. Even though we got the pet friendly cabin, he refused to go to the bathroom for 17 hours. Yeah. We took him to the area several times. Now granted, when we crossed, it was foggy and the pet area was right underneath the foghorn. 
Hi, Rudolph. What's going on? He doesn't like the foghorn, so we're going to take him to the room. Yeah. He's pretty uh, upset about it right we're now. take him to the room, let him relax a little bit. Maybe we'll catch hey. a bite to eat. did not do well. I felt so bad for all the other pets that were in the kennels. They're in a secure room and you can shut the door, but they too were underneath the foghorn. So we are going to highly, highly, highly suggest if you have a pet to take the uh, Port of Basque Ferry. Yeah, and we could have drove back to the Port of Basque Ferry and just spent the gas money and it still would have been cheaper than the ferry that we ended up taking. Yeah, now we paid seven hundred and forty five dollars for this ferry from argentia to nova scotia yeah. it is an eight hour drive from argentia from st john's to Porta basque and that's roughly around 600 miles so even with that drive and the gas price and the time limit it still would have been cheaper for us to drive all the way back to yeah if we were to do it again, that'd be the route we would have taken. It would, it would be cheaper for us. It'd be better for Rudel. Um, 17 hours is just a long time on a ferry. It is a long time. Now they do have, this ferry was like a cruise ship. I will say that there was, it was a beautiful ferry. I have nothing bad to say about it. Yeah, they had restaurants and entertainment. Like I said, I'll go find something else sparkly and another pair of go-go boots and I'll come down and entertain you and uh, we'll have a fun night. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. What? You're never too old to chase your dreams, ever. And I realize now, it's like, I don't want to be that old lady looking back on my life, regretting never taking that one chance to chase after my dream. There was a movie theater and the seats that you could um, just find yourself. There was one area where they called it open air seats where you just sit up in the seat and you sleep all night. They had restrooms and showers right next to them. Huh. The, now on the Argentia ferry, that was not an extra cost. On the Porta Basque ferry, I believe that's what they call reserve seating. Huh. And you had to pay for that. Porta Basque to St. John's is an eight hour and 54 minute drive. It's 900 kilometers or 550. Uh, the Porta Basque Ferry to St. Anthony, that is seven hours and 20 minutes, 680 kilometers, 422 miles. So if you wanna to go to the Viking villages, then Porta Basque is probably gonna be the best ferry for you. Uh, Porta Basque to Twillingate, which everybody wants to go to Twillingate to see the icebergs. That's a six hour and 28 minute drive, 623 kilometers, 386 miles. Um, the Twillingate from Argentia, it's a little bit shorter, four hours and 25 minutes, 393 kilometers, 244 miles. So I guess the most important questions for you to consider before you purchase a ferry ticket. What is on your bucket list? What do you have to see? That will determine. And what? how much time do you have to see these? How much money you have. <laughs> how much money you have. And if you have a pet. Yeah, there's lots to consider. Lots and lots to consider. Now, we figure we probably could have saved ourselves about $400 even with the gas price of driving from St. John's all the way back to Porta Basque. Yep. And we would have got to see Twillingate again, so. <laughs> and all the icebergs. Yes. <laughs> I hope, I know this is a lot of information I just threw at you. I hope that this helps you in any way. If you have any questions, please leave a, uh, leave a comment below 
and we will try to get back to you if we know the answer. If not, we'll try to find the yeah. answer to your question. And we will be doing a few, uh, video in the future of what you need to know about Newfoundland. All right, thank you for watching. If you haven't watched our Newfoundland series, you might want to go do that. There's some spectacular videos in there. If you've been with us from the beginning, thank you for coming along. And we will catch you next week. Is it way down? hours. He didn't waste no time. Poor guy. Thank you to all our patrons who made this incredible journey possible.